Some applications, like web servers, are intended to run indefinitely. Therefore, you should use a controller to ensure that the server pods are always running. But what about finitely executed applications? Is it acceptable to run them in a naked pod? The answer is no. For example, a pod could be suddenly evicted from its node before completing its task. In those kinds of situations, you should use a new type of controller called a job to make sure that the pod successfully executes until completion. Put more succinctly, a job is a type of controller for safeguarding the execution of finitely executed pods. There are three kinds of jobs, non-parallel jobs, parallel jobs with a fixed completion count, and parallel jobs with a task queue. A non-parallel job usually has a single pod, but if the pod goes down, the job starts a new pod to replace it. For instance, let's say that we want to print out the first 100 Fibonacci numbers. The kind is job, and the name is 100 Fibonacci's. The job has a pod template like you would see in a deployment. But notice that there are no pod labels or matching label selectors. The job creates the labels and commensurate selectors for you. While you can specify your own selector, 99 times out of 100 you should let Mr. Jobs do it for you. A job pod's restart policy must either be on failure or never. It cannot be always because that doesn't make any sense. Jobs are only designed to run pods which eventually terminate. A restart policy of always would never let the container, and therefore the pod, terminate. The backoff limit specifies the maximum number of times a job can retry a failed pod before giving up. Note that the backoff limit has an exponential backoff delay going from 10 seconds to 20 seconds to 40 seconds and capping out at 6 minutes. Also note that the default is 6 retries. Let's create the job. I'm going to describe the job to show you that the pod status is one way to determine that the job is still actively running. Now let's watch the pods until the job completes. Notice that when we describe the job again, the pod status tells us that it has succeeded and is therefore done. Also notice that the pod is not deleted when it finishes. The reason why the pod still exists is so that we can query its logs to get the job results. For instance, A cron job runs Kubernetes jobs at specifically scheduled moments in time. It's modeled after the Unix cron utility. Cron job schedules use the same format as the Unix cron utility. Let's review it now. So if we want to run something five minutes after the start of every hour, we would need something like this. If you want to run the job a minute before the end of the day, i.e. at 2359, your schedule would look something like this. If you want to run a job on the 15th day of every month, then you would schedule your cron job like this. Here's how you would schedule a cron job to execute a job every three minutes. The value after the slash specifies the time step. Lastly, note that the question mark is equivalent to the star, i.e. it stands for any available values for a given field. Why don't we go over a simple example of a cron job which creates a new job every minute, which in turn prints out the current date and time before stopping. The cron job first specifies a schedule like the ones we went over. Note that the value is surrounded by quotes. This cron job is scheduled to create a job roughly every minute. Next we have the job template. This is a template for the job objects which this cron job will create. Everything in the job template is the same as what you find in a normal Kubernetes job, minus the API version, kind, and metadata fields. In the job template is a pod template. In that pod template, we specify that we want to run the date utility in a shell. After we create the cron job, let's use the get command to watch it. See how the last schedule field is none? That's because no job has been scheduled yet. 
Now that a job has finished, I'm going to use the logs command to view its results.